Okay, so today I am doing pre-lab questions for experiment number three, which is oxalate stoichiometry. And for this experiment, there are three different metals that you could be assigned. However, you will only be assigned one of them, and it's going to be determined by the desk number that you sit in in lab. So, for example, if you sit in desk number one, four, seven, 10, 13, 16, 19, or 22, you will be testing iron and have to do the iron pre-lab questions for this experiment. If you sit in desk 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, and 23, then you only have to do the nickel pre-lab questions and will be testing nickel when you get to lab this week. All other desks, you will be doing the manganese. So you don't have to do all three sets of your pre-lab questions, um, only the metal that pertains to your desk number in lab. Now, I am going to show you how to do the pre-lab questions for iron. However, the process for completing those for nickel and manganese are exactly the same. So it's the process that you want to learn here. And again, these are the exact type of calculations that you will be doing when you get to lab and are completing experiment number three. Not only that, you will be using some of your pre-lab answers in your data report sheet, the table that you fill out, when you are done with experiment number three. So you really want to make sure that you do a good job on these questions, okay? So if we look at the pre-lab questions, the first one asks us to calculate a molar mass of FeCl2 dot 4H2O. Now, dot 4H2O or dash 4H2O in this particular instance, this is what's known as a hydrate, okay? So basically what that means is, is that the iron chloride, the FeCl2, is surrounded by water molecules, okay? And the biggest thing about a hydrate is, is that when you're calculating the molar mass, you need to include it with your molar mass. So when we calculate molar mass, we know we have to look at the periodic table, and when we do, we see that we have iron, and iron has a molar mass of 55.85 grams per mole. Now, if we look at the formula itself, we see that there's only one iron present, so we only have to count one when determining the molar mass of this compound. Okay? So we do the same thing for chlorine. We look on the periodic table, we see molar mass 35.45 grams per mole. Now, in the formula itself, you see that there are two of them. So we have to account for that when determining our molar mass. So we've got iron taken care of, we've got chlorine taken care of. Now we have to take care of the hydrate. And what you can see here is, is that we've got some hydrogen. We look at hydrogen, we see, okay, we have a molar mass of 1.008 grams per mole. Now we have to account for how many of them are actually present in the formula itself. So we see that there are two for every water molecule, okay? But this is indicating that there are four water molecules in total. So if we have four total water molecules and in, within each water molecule they have two hydrogens, we know that in total there are eight hydrogens present. Same thing with oxygen. If we look at that, we know it has a molar mass of 16 grams per mole. And you know that there are four water molecules. Each water molecule has one oxygen. So in total, there are four oxygens present. So once we calculate, we uh, multiply and then add up our numbers on our calculator, we have a molar mass of 198.81 grams per Per mole. And this is a number that you will use in further calculations for question number five in the prelapse. So it's very important that you do this correctly. Okay, so we've now determined the molar mass of a metal salt, in this case, iron chloride. Same thing applies when you have nickel or manganese. Okay, now with this experiment, what you're going to do is, is you are going to start off with a metal salt, whether it be iron, whether it be nickel, whether it be manganese. And you are going to react it with oxalic acid and you are going to form an oxalate product. Okay, So you're going to form a metal oxalate. In this instance, 
If you're using iron, you're going to form iron oxalate, and it too is also going to be a hydrate. So the first part in this experiment is to take a metal salt, react it with oxalic acid, and form a metal oxalate. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, since we're forming a metal oxalate, we obviously have to know what its molar mass is as well. So we have to do the same thing for question number two. So again, if we look, we have iron. We know that it has a molar mass 55.85 grams per mole. And if we look at the formula, we see that there is only one of them present. We've got carbon, and it has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole. And if you look at the formula, we see that there are two carbons present in this formula. We look at the oxygen, just in the oxalate, we see that it has a molar mass of 16, and there are four of them. So we've taken uh, care of the iron oxalate, now we have to take care of the hydrate, okay? And again, what you see here is, is that it's saying that there are two water molecules present. So for hydrogen, we know it has a molar mass of 1.008 grams per mole, and there are two hydrogens for every water molecule, and there are two water molecules present, so you know that there has to be four total hydrogens present in the molecule. For oxygen, same thing. We have 16 grams per mole, and there are two water molecules, so that we know we have two oxygens present. So again, we multiply, we add these numbers up, and when we do, we get a molar mass of 179.90 grams per mole. So we've just figured out the molar mass of iron oxalate. Okay, so again, you're going to take a metal salt, react it with oxalic acid, and form a metal oxalate. That's the first part for experiment number three. Now, because you're doing this reaction, it's going to be important that you can write a balanced chemical reaction. So, if we move on to question three, we see, write a balanced molecular equation with your metal salt reacting with oxalic acid to form a metal oxalate, okay? But we also have to figure out what the other products are. So, if we look at this product, uh, problem, we have to interpret it. We see we have this reacting with this. What that tells you is what your reactants are. So, we have FeCl2, and because water is present, we know it has to have an aqueous phase. We've got oxalic acid, and because it is an acid, we know that it has to be in the aqueous phase, otherwise it's not an acid. And we see it reacts to form, so we know this has to be a product. So we have FeC2O4 dihydrate. Now, the remainder of the question says what are the other product or products present in the reaction. So, if we look at what we've used thus far, we've used the iron and we've used the oxalate, okay? And we've also formed 2H2O. But if you look here, there's four of them. So, what that says is if we've only used two, it's a good chance that H2O is also going to be a product, okay? And you know that H2O has a liquid designation. Now, Perhaps you think that you are finished, that there are no other products except for the water and the iron oxalate. Well, good way to check is to balance everything by mass. And quick way to look is, is if you look and see Cl2, there's two chlorines on the left-hand side. In order for this reaction to be correct, you have to have two chlorines on the right-hand side. And we don't have that, so you know that there has to be another product formed. So, if we look and see what we've used, we've gotten rid of iron, we've taken care of the oxalate, we've used all the H2Os, pretty much what we have left, we have H2 and we have Cl2. So we had hydrogen and chlorine left. And you know when those get around each other, they very typically form a very common acid, HCl, or hydrochloric acid. And since it's an acid, 
you know that it has an aqueous phase. So if we look at this, we see, okay, we have two additional products. Let's check the mass to make sure that everything is balanced correctly because this has to be a balanced chemical reaction. Okay, so if we look and see, we see we have two chlorines on the left-hand side. We only have one on the right-hand side, so we know that there might be a two in front of here. Now, balancing chemical equations, it's basically by trial and error. There's no, you know, step-by-step -step way to balance a chemical e equation every single time. So by simply by trial and error, you go through and you want the same amount of elements on the reactive side as you have on the product side. So since I have two chlorines on the reactant side, I need to have two chlorines on the product side. So by adding this two here as a coefficient, I have now balanced by mass the chlorine. But I also have to check to make sure that all other elements are balanced by mass as well. So if I look, I have one iron on the left-hand side. I've got one iron on the right-hand side. So right now I have chlorine and iron balanced. Okay. If I look, I see, okay, I have two carbons on the left-hand side. I've got two carbons on the right-hand side. So, so far, so good. We have everything balanced. The last thing we need to check is with the hydrogen and the oxygens. Okay. So when we look at the oxygens, we'll do the oxygens first. This compound here provides us with four oxygens. And this one here also gives us four. So in total, we have eight oxygens on the left-hand side of the reaction. We need to have eight on the right-hand side as well. So we look, we see we have four here, and then another two, so that's six. And then we have one here, so seven, and there's none in the HCl. So I only have seven oxygens on the, re the product side. So that's not balanced by mass, so I know I'm going to have to change a coefficient. Now, the iron's balanced, the carbon's balanced, the chlorine's balanced. If I put a two here, that also balances my oxygens. So now I have eight oxygens on both sides of my reactions. Now, I have iron, carbon, chlorine, and oxygen balanced. I need to check my hydrogens to make sure that they two are balanced as well. So if I check my hydrogens, I see that I have eight hydrogens here and two hydrogens from the oxalic acid. So in total, 10 hydrogens on the reactant side. If I look on the product side, I have four from the iron oxalate, I have four from the H2O, and I have two more from the HCl, which in total gives me 10. So all of the elements are balanced by mass. So this is my balanced chemical equation where I have a one in front of my metal salt, I have a one in front of my oxalic acid, I have a one in front of my iron oxalate, a two in front of my water, and a two in front of my acid. Okay. Now, you might be asking, what if you don't include the one? That's okay, you don't have to include it. Um, you, can, you can if you want to, but if you omit it, it's understood that there is a one there. So we have everything balanced by mass, we have the molar mass of our iron oxalate, we have the molar mass of our iron salt. Okay, and remember the important thing with these, you have to pay attention to the hydrate.